that which you do not hate, you will eventually tolerate. I think that identifies most people's lives. In other words, average becomes sort of like this slow asphyxiation. It's almost like an anesthetic. And that over time, we become kind of immune and dulled to the average that we're becoming. You're going to get out of your life what you'll accept. That's really difficult for people, I think, to understand is, look, what you think you're worth and what you're going to tolerate is absolutely what you're going to bring into your life and what the outward part of your life is going to look like. And so I live by that. Like, I let myself sort of feel the pain and the difficulty of being not where I want to be in whatever that area is, whether it's my spirituality, my relationships, my money. I let myself feel that pain because as you know, there's two motivators, right? There's the gaining of pleasure, right? Wanting to go get something, chasing the dream, but then there's the avoidance of pain. Why are you crying? Talk to me. I don't feel confident in myself. You don't feel confident in yourself? Why not? Look at me, son, why not? Because I keep at the door and over again. Over and over again doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. It just means you have to practice, son. Have I yelled at you? Have I done any of that? All right. You haven't done this before. Remember what I said about Einstein? He's on record as being one of the smartest men ever to exist. He says it's not that I'm smarter than anyone, it's just that I stick with problems longer. So in this case, it's not that he understands how to move in his move his hands and feet better than anyone. It's just that I keep trying over and over again till I get it. You understand? All right, get your hands up. Every single person who ever came on my show, and I hear there's like 37,000 guests I've talked to. A lot of them came from dysfunction and a lot of them wouldn't appear to be teachers, but every one of them had something to say that was meaningful and valuable and that I could use to grow myself into the best of myself, which is what all of our jobs are. Your number one job is to become more of yourself and to grow yourself into the best of yourself. Well, I can't dunk. No, but you can cook. What are you talking about? Your resume says that you minored in French culinary arts. For most students, they were going to fryer at KFC, but you bust tables at Il Picador to support yourself. And then you get out of college, and you come and you work here. How much did they first pay you to give up on your dreams? 27 grand a year. And when were you going to stop? and come back and do what makes you happy? Good question. I see guys who work at the same company for their entire lives, guys exactly like you. They clock in, they clock out, and they never have a moment of happiness. You have an opportunity here, Bob. This is a rebirth. Now, if not for you, do it for your children. It was a young man who, you know, he wanted to make a lot of money. And so he went to this guru. He told the guru, you know, I want to be on the same level you are. And so the guru said, if you want to be on the same level I'm on, I'll meet you tomorrow at the beach at 4 a.m. So the young man got there at 4 a.m. The old man grabs his hand and said, how bad do you want to be successful? He said, real bad. He said, walk on out in the water. So he walks out into the water. Watch this. When he walks out into the water, it goes waist deep. He said, walk a little further. He came, dropped his head in, held him down. Just before my man was about to pass out, he raised him up. He said, I got a question for you. Somebody, he said, when you were underwater, what did you want to do? He said, when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. If you say you want to be successful, but you don't want it bad, you just kind of want it. The most important thing is this, to be able at any moment to sacrifice what you are for what you will become. There's so many things that we wanted to do, but we hadn't done them because they were buried. We were buried by work, by school, by life, and we had moments of inspiration, but eventually those became buried by the day to day. So right then and there, we decided to call this film The Buried Life. Now in an attempt to unbury ourselves, we asked the question, what do you want to do before you die? You see, the thought of death was the only thing that shook us enough to think about what was important. And with that, we made a list of our buried dreams. Right? We just decided to make the most epic bucket list of all time. But when we made this list, there was two rules. Number one, 
Pretend you had a hundred million dollars in the bank. Number two, pretend you could do anything. So if anything were possible, what would you do? Well, we would make our own TV show, go to space, write a number one New York Times bestseller, pay off our parents' mortgage, tell a judge you want the truth, you can't handle the truth, 